but Good. welcome. So glad to have everyone back with us for another amazing episode of the nonprofit show. If you joined us early, you uh, got to hear a little bit more about uh, Logan and again, some of our affiliations within the golf community. So today we do have Logan Foote with us from golfstatus.org, and he is going to share with us what it looks like to tee up for dollars. So if you are considering a fundraising event uh, that might consider golfing, this is your episode that you will want to tune into. So make sure you hang around to hear all of what Logan has to say. If you have not met us yet, Julia Patrick and I are here as the co-host. Julia Patrick is the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. She thought of this wonderful episode uh, what she thought would be two weeks, and we're going on three years. So really excited to have the growth. And again, thanks to all of you as our audience. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And we are also extremely grateful to have the continued support from our presenting sponsors, such as Bloomerang and the American Nonprofit Academy. Fundraising Academy, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Part-Time Controller, The Nonprofit Atlas, The Nonprofit Thought Leader, as well as Staffing Boutique. So thank you, thank you, thank you to our presenting sponsors that keep our conversations like the one we're about to have now with Logan. So welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Okay, Logan, we have so many questions for you, and we're so intrigued because your company is going to help any nonprofit figure out what a golf tournament and golf management is all about. So give us the quick rundown and frame up for us what golfstatus.org does before we start peppering you with all these questions. Yeah, for sure. So um, essentially we are a golf technology company. The .org side of our business is really the nonprofit arm of our company where we work directly with not only events being put on by nonprofits, but any third party events being put on to benefit a, a nonprofit or a charity um, and really just help them put on a, a streamlined, uh, lucrative golf event through our technology. So our technology really excels at streamlining a lot of the golf specific tasks that, you know, there's a lot of general event software out there, but uh, you need really need software that can handle those golf specifics when it comes to putting on a golf event. And then we have some really cool ways that we help uh, driving some additional revenue and just overall making the process a lot easier uh, for, for those, especially those who aren't golfers and who aren't familiar with the sport, but they, you know, they work for a nonprofit or they they're in charge of uh, fundraising. Um, we can just make it so much easier and less intimidating to, to put on a, a golf event. And uh, I always emphasize in these shows that I do is you don't need to know about golf. I, I've, worked with many uh, successful golf fundraisers, some tournaments which raise seven yeah. figures. They're not golfers. They don't know the sport at all, but they can put on a golf event and you can too, for sure. I hey. remember Logan, the first golf tournament that I was part of as staff. And I heard this crazy term about selling mulligans. And I was like, mm -hmm. what the heck are we talking about? What is a mulligan? I've heard of widgets, right? And then I literally like could not put this together. So I'm really glad to hear your organization is not only for the golf pros, but also for, you know, everyone who really can, can take a part in this. So let's do talk about how these golf enthusiasts intersect with donors. I would love to hear how you approach this for the nonprofit? Because I heard you use the word lucrative. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I mean, there are so many golf events put on annually for charity. And I have a stat that I know um, about annually golf raises almost $4 billion for, for charity. So they can be extremely lucrative. Um, obviously, when it comes to attracting sponsors to your event, it's a very high-end demographic that they're e eager to get in front of. Um, so really, the, the golfing demographic in general is just typically very generous. Um, so if you combine a sport that they love in golf with a philanthropic cause, usually they're going to jump at the chance to be able to support that. And then kind of on top of that, something else I always love, love to point out, it's all, also not just a great way to steward your existing donors, but even grow your donor base as a lot of these events are four person teams. And so usually what happens is you have one person who is familiar with your organization sign up. They bring along three of their friends who likely have not been exposed to your organization, to your mission. So you have usually four or five, sometimes even six hours with a bunch of people who don't know who you are, what you do, that you can hopefully turn into, you know, uh, 
really consistent supporters of your organization going forward from there. So it's a great way to not only steward your existing donors, but grow that, that donor database as well. I love that. And I think that is an, a magical way to think about it mm-hmm. as a development tool, because you're right. You know, you're, you're, you're selling a foursome, but generally it's going to be one person connected to the, to the group and then pulling in other folks. I've got a question really quickly. It seems to me that a lot of these um, events seem to be male oriented um, and they'll be kind of like a female, like luncheon, and then they move through to a, a more, you know, the, the male side of the community. And I'm wondering like, is that just old school thinking or is that really what happens or, or how are we mixing things up? Yeah, I mean, it's no secret golf is male dominated. Um, So a lot of your golf events you see will have majority of the participants will be male, you'll have some females uh, sprinkled in there. But I get the question a lot, like, how do I attract more more females to participate in the golf event? And uh, I usually the most popular answer I I like to give I've gotten a lot of good feedback on is, if you're going to attract females to the golf event, whether they're experienced golfers or, or not, and is this can't even relate even going past just females, just people who are not comfortable or who are not experienced in the game of golf. Right. What I, I usually suggest is, well, you can pair a clinic with your golf event. So you have um, the golf tournament for those who are experienced, who are actually going to play in it. And then you can also have at the same time, a clinic like on the range where you're kind of teaching fundamentals of the game of golf uh, to those who are less experienced. So basically the, the key is to surround people with uh, others who are at their sort of same skill level. Um, And then for any of those people who just want to be at the event, they don't want to play golf. They have no interest in playing. I mean, just hop on a cart and have some drinks and, you know, uh, just have a great time. You don't have to actually swing a club or, uh, you know, you could just pull out a putter every time you're on the green, if you'd like. So um, it always just, just make sure the event is about the fun, about raising money for a great cause. And um, if that's the kind of the core part of the, the whole event, you'll, you'll attract all sorts of people. Yeah. I love that. And, and again, I am not a golfer, but I always love being a part of just about any athletic event, whether it's a charity golf tournament mm-hmm. or, you know, a, a professional tournament, whatever it might be, just being part of that atmosphere, I think is very communal. It's very positive. It's typically a, a, a beautiful sunshiny chamber of commerce day out on the golf course. So that's, you know, that's really nice. So that's, that's great to hear. What about as we talk uh, for this range of revenue, again, you threw out the word lucrative, Logan, so 4 (laughs) billion, which that is a great number to hear. So is that a national philanthropic number uh, for golf tournaments? Yeah, so that's annually what they bring in. And I know since 2012, uh, that number is close to 20 billion. Um, So it is, it is incredibly, incredibly lucrative. And when it comes to the revenue opportunities with golf events where these golf events make a lot of their, their revenue is through uh, the sale of sponsorships. Um, So it's uh, like I said, sponsors are eager to get in front of, you know, high end demographics, which is the golfer demographic for sure. Uh, And so the most successful golf events sell a very wide range of sponsorships. I have one of my favorite organizers I work with. um, She always tells me if I can put a logo on it, I'm selling a sponsorship for it. Um, (laughs) Brings in a bunch of money. Um, for uh, one of the events we work with are called Josh the Otter, basically uh, educating kids about the safety of, of water safety. Um, so shout out to, uh, to Josh the Otter. Um, but it's, uh, it's where you will make most of your money. Obviously, you'll make a little bit off of the foursomes that you sell. But uh, with sponsorships, it's a great opportunity to, to bring in a lot of revenue for your event. Um, it's also a great way to kind of foster your relationships with your corporate partners, selling them sponsorships to your event. A lot of our events will include a team of golfers with their sponsorships. So the, the, the company is sending out people from their company to participate and you can turn those into not just a single year sponsorship, but a multi-year relationship that allows you just to continue to foster those, those corporate connections uh, that you have. So that's where a lot of the money is made, but there's also a lot of other great ways that you can raise revenue from the golf events, including um, uh, some, uh, uh, on course contests, you know, hole in one contests, putting contests are always very popular. People simply, uh, you know, throw cash or purchase them ahead of time to, to participate, have a shot at a prize, like a cash prize, or sometimes it's a, a luxury trip, uh, stuff like that. Um, and then also, uh, you mentioned earlier, a sell of mulligans, 
um, drink tickets, raffle tickets. There's so many cool things you can do to, to help drive revenue, but where you'll see most of it come through is, is from those sponsorships. Interesting. Logan, is this helicopter drop still popular? I remember seeing that for the first <laughs> time. And so for those of you that might not be familiar, it's literally a helicopter and you drop like these bags of balls, right? You open the bag and, and, and I think the point is to see if your ball, maybe there's a number on the ball, um, makes it into the hole or closest to the hole. So the first time I saw this, I mean, it was a whirlwind, literally, literally. of excitement, you know, because you see this huge helicopter. Now, when you can partner that with a news channel and get some media press, you know, that's always great. Is that still like the newest and latest hot ticket item? Or is there something better than the helicopter drop now? those helicopters are still out there. Okay. <laughs> you know, you'll, you'll still find them. Yes. No, that's a, that's always a fun one. If you you know, have the ability to, to bring that into your event, pull that off. That's yeah, obviously a huge attraction. I'm sure everyone was standing around watching that play out. Um, oh, yeah. So, so no, that's still a fun one. Some other fun ones I've seen, or uh, you get to use an air cannon instead of your driver off the tee uh, to hit your first shot. Um, I had a really cool idea, an event, basically they sold a sponsorship to a liquor company and they put a big basket of uh, all different types of, uh, of liquor uh, from this company in the middle of a fairway. And whoever hit their tee shot closest to that basket got to keep the, the whole basket and just go home with all of that. Um, <laughs> I think it was a, a, a bourbon company in Kentucky. Um, so that uh, makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> right. Right. So there's so many cool things you can do to make it fun, make it memorable. Um, and that's wow. a big key to make sure you, these people keep coming back year after year. Um, right. One of the organizations we work with uh, a credit union that raises money for children's miracle network hospitals. Uh, they are always thinking of new entertaining ways for their golfers. And it's not just fun for the golfers, but for the staff as well. He says, it's my favorite day of the year to go to work when we have our golf. Oh, yeah. you're, you're combining having so much fun with raising money for such a good cause. I mean, what, what's better than that? Yeah. It's a long day. It's, it could, it can be exhausting, mm -hmm. but it's so worth it. I really love those opportunities. Um, so tell us more about the organization uh, and how you serve organizations that want to do a golf tournament, because I know, I know they exist. And I know that people are wanting to up-level what they're currently doing. Hopefully yeah. now people are looking into the helicopter drop, but what if we have never done a golf tournament uh, and this is something that we want to start. How, yeah. like what technology, what support are you providing? For sure. And we, we love first year tournament organizers. We've had so many come to us this past year, largely really? because of COVID um, yeah. golf being one of the, the safe events you could still hold. Um, so if you are a first year event organizer, you need help, please come talk to us. We, we have the expertise on staff to get you going. Um, but through what we call uh, our golf for good program, we essentially waive our typical upfront fee. We charge any for-profit events we work with. So we can get you in, get you started, get you access to our technology for nothing upfront. If you are a nonprofit or if you are uh, an organizer raising money for a nonprofit with a golf event. And really what we do is we provide you with um, a custom event website where you can uh, take registrations and payments for anything you're selling for the event, golfers, sponsors, add-ons like your mulligans, your drink tickets, raffle tickets, uh, anything you want to sell for the golf event, you can drive everyone here. It makes it really easy to promote the golf event, take all of those payments uh, and track everything. And then that all feeds into our tournament management software, which is the technology that is specific to the golf event that makes it so much easier, especially for you first timers who are new and uh, maybe not experienced with golf. This will handle all that golf specific, all those nuances for you. And then we also do really cool things with live scoring. So we have an app where you can live score. Participants can score on their phone. It goes to a live leaderboard uh, where that's all updated. Uh, we have a lot now of that events. I have not seen. That yeah. is cool. pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah, we have a ton of events that will share that link to the leaderboard out while it's going on. And what's really cool for our nonprofit events is we just throw a couple of donate now buttons up on that leaderboard to help them drive some additional in-kind donations. Okay. We've gotten some really good feedback from some partners that say, I can't believe how many donations I got just yeah. by sharing that. And it's all about just making it easy, making that barrier to provide that donation really low. Um, and so we've had a lot of great luck uh, with our partners driving more uh, more revenue through that simple donate button. Um, but then we also have a couple of unique ways we can help drive some more sponsorship revenue. Our platform does have the ability to showcase 
uh, some sponsors in some cool, unique ways within the technology. So uh, adding that to your already existing list of sponsorship levels can, can help drive more revenue as well. So that's kind of a 30,000 foot view of what we can provide. But really, at the end of the day, it's just about making it easy and uh, streamlined and uh, help you drive more of what matters for your golf event, you know, impact, revenue, all those great things. So I have a question and I would love to know how you solve this. Uh, you mentioned that maybe someone purchases the foursome and then they bring their three friends. Now, of course, we as the organization leader, we want to know their names. We want to have their contact information. But the reality is that doesn't always happen, right? Whether it's a gala, a golf tournament or, or what have you, someone will say, oh, me and three guests and you're not going to get their names because we don't know, right? How does your system or how does your professional experience advise us to make sure we capture these names because that is a donor acquisition possibility? Yeah, really with, uh, with our websites we set up, we can collect anything you'd like to collect. We can make things required, not required, whatever it may be. Uh, we can set it up how you would like. And then when it comes to those, those players that say, uh, oh, I'm going to bring myself in three to-be-determined guests, uh, it's very easy to have the, the software up. The software is completely web-based, um, so you can access it wherever as long as you have a laptop and have that up at registration and be collecting that information then. Whenever you make a change to your golfers, they're inevitable, right, with golf tournaments. Uh, this person could have come, so I brought this person instead. Right you can make those changes and it makes the change across the entire platform instantly. Um, so it's just, it's just so easy and makes all that collection uh, so much easier. So even if you need to collect any information past name, email address, phone number, if you need shirt size, dietary restrictions, hat size, whatever it may be, uh, we can make it easy to collect that info. That is fantastic. And I'm imagining that having this digital leaderboard, you know, it really elevates the, the need for the information because, you know, the hand signed uh, scorecards and all of that, it's really easy to still be a plus, plus, plus friend and you yeah, still don't get their information. Sure. Um, but I see this as a great opportunity for organizations um, because you're right, shirt size, dietary restrictions, but we could also squeeze in a little like, Hey, what's your birth date or what's, you know, like we can get more donor centric information from a platform like this as they're starting to fill out, you know, information for a golf tournament. Um, so that is fantastic. My other question, and this is again, you know, completely out of left field. <laughs> Have you been a part of nighttime or like glow in the dark tournaments? Cause I think that would be fun and also bring in a whole new audience that maybe aren't golf enthusiasts, but are really out there to have a good time. I want to say we have worked with a glow golf tournament. Um, okay. You obviously, you got to have those balls that glow really well. Um, you know, nighttime golf tournaments are possible. There are some facilities out there that have their golf courses lit uh, at night. Um, I don't know how many there are, but, but yes, glow golf could definitely bring in uh, a, a more audience, maybe even more kids. Uh, I could see enjoying that a lot. Um, and I think that would honestly be probably less intimidating to those people that we talked about earlier who aren't experienced as much with golf because you're, it's at night. Um, yeah. uh, and it's just, it's just a different atmosphere. I think, uh, when you're playing glow golf, um, as opposed to a regular golf, it's more, it's probably a little more obviously fun than, than competitive. Yeah. Well, and even if you did it, uh, just if you did it on, and in terms of using the range, yeah, and you could get more to that to that area as opposed to having people op on the open course, mm -hmm. um, or taking it to a three hole kind of situation. Or, um, I, I have a question about the executive golf course. You know, the nine hole experience versus the the eighteen. Are you seeing more organizations go to a nine hole um, experience because? they're all of these games within the games and, and the different holes have sponsors and, and other things, or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's a good way. I think it's, I see it more when they have a smaller field uh, of golfers is when they go the nine hole, if they have the, the field size that can fill up an 18 hole course, they, you know, they do it. Um, and even past that, if they can fill up a 36 hole course. So if, if you're just starting out and you kind of want to test the waters and see, 
how much participation you'll have with, especially for first year golf events, mm -hmm. a nine hole course is, I think is a really good option for sure. Okay. And then to follow up on that, it seems to me, and this was really more pre pandemic, but it seemed to be that more organizations were having like their golf event. And then they were kind of tagging at the end, like a barbecue or a dinner or something like that. So that, that they could then get the folks that didn't feel comfortable um, playing, playing a round of golf. Right. Oh yeah. Or that it was like, they couldn't give up the day or whatever. And I'm wondering like, and, and that was a, um, like a fundraiser. It had, it had, would have a component auction, mm -hmm. stuff like that. What are you seeing on that? Yeah. Uh, auctions are really big. Uh, the silent auctions I think are still uh, taking place. We saw a lot, especially last year, they'd, they'd get rid of the, the, the gathering, the dinner, the rewards banquet afterwards, especially if it was indoors. Saw some events simply just move them outside. If the, if the course could accommodate, you know, they, they had it on the range and just put up a big tent for everyone to, to sit under. Um, but having that after the fact, obviously it's a very big social component of the event where everyone gets back together. And that's something the live scoring does nicely is it can give you your results a lot quicker. So you can move on to what else you have uh, planned for the evening. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of those gatherings come back now that we're kind of getting into 2022. Um, and hopefully the, the trend of cases, COVID cases going down continues. Um, but in terms of kind of what those typically look like, I'd say, you know, having the dinner afterwards and a lot of the time we see auctions uh, tied with that as well. Okay. What is the timeline if we say, cause I'm going to tell you, Logan, you yeah. kind of sold me on doing a golf tournament. And if we wanted to do this, what would be the timeline? Like, okay, now I'm sold. Are we looking 90 day? Um, yeah. What's, what's considered normal. Yeah. I, I would say a good time, time frame is usually four to six months, but if you, if you're a very organized person, I've seen it pulled off in like two months. Um, nice thing about our, our platform is we have a very quick turnaround time to get you set up and uh, get everything moving for you. Um, but usually, you know, the more time you can give yourself the better, uh, but it is totally doable. Uh, really once you get a date in a golf course, booked um you can hit the ground running and just need a couple months to to get things all set from there you'll really have to obviously grind on those sponsorships and get everything sold if if you're looking at two three months but that a two to six month time frame is what we usually see most but i'm right there with your friend if i can put a logo on it i'm gonna put a, a dollar amount next to it <laughs> for sure absolutely is there a better day where you're gonna get a, a better course value for a nonprofit event yeah, so that's always something that they need to consider when planning a golf event. Do I want to go to a public course or a private course? You know, the public course, obviously, it'll be cheaper, um, so you won't have to charge as much. Uh, but the private course, while it may be more expensive, yeah, that may be a draw for your tournament to golfers. Oh, I don't belong at this club, but I could get on if I play in this charity event. Um, now, with the private course, a lot of those courses reserve Mondays uh, for their outside outings, so you're likely going to have to go on a Monday. Uh, which you may like or dislike, you know, depending on uh, who you are and the golfers you're trying to attract. Whereas, you know, the, the public courses, um, you probably will have your pick of whatever day uh, they would like. Now, if, if you do want to do this, that's where I would start. Find a course, determine what time of year you want to hold your event, and then just start calling around. Um, a lot of these places will have dedicated people to talk to you for outside golf events. Um, and they want your business. Golf courses make a lot of their annual revenue off of uh, charity outings. So they're going to be very excited that, that you're calling and, and talking to them. Wow. You know, this has been amazing. I and mean, we, if you were with us in the green room chatter, um, you know, Jarrett and I live in a part of the world where we have an enormous golf culture. We have golf courses all over the place at all levels and um, this has been really, really interesting because I think sometimes this experience is an opportunity for us to look at donor cultivation and stewardship, of course, but that cultivation factor of four, it blows my mind. And it's it, because we don't think of it that way. We think, oh, we hear foursome, but this was really a cool thing to learn from you. Our time is almost up. And um, again, Jarrett, my, my, my head is spinning. And I know you have worked with 
um, a girls golf organization and nonprofit. Um, what are what are your thoughts on this? You know, I love it. I love the technology support. I love the, um, you know, everything being digital for the leaderboard, the push for the donation. I mean, that is very philanthropic centric. Um, and so for me as the nonprofit nerd, that's very important because not only are we here to have fun on the greens, but also to, to bring in some greens for the charity because it's so, it, it's so important. And, you know, I've also to Logan's point of doing an after event, you know, having a barbecue or a lunch or something, and then doing some silent auction items. I've emceed some of those events too, and they are fantastic, right? Like the, just the camaraderie again, I keep coming back to that. Cause I just feel like it's, it's an environment of community, but that camaraderie, the excitement, um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. So I don't think they're going anywhere. Again, I, I know they exist. I know a lot of people are doing them. Some people might be tired of them, but these are great new ways to up level what you've already done. Yeah. I'm really, I, I, I think, think it's, it's a no brainer, honestly. <laughs> I do too. And, you know, I just keep thinking, um, Logan, and we're going to throw your information back up here on the screen, but I think it's kind of magical thinking about looking at your the spectrum of your donors and donor engagement and, and finding out how this might dovetail to a new group of people or engaging people in a way that um, connects them. And, and you started off by saying this, and this was amazing. You know, this is a six hour window where you have an opportunity to engage with, with donors or prospective donors where else can we get that? Where else can, can we find that opportunity? Um, I, you know, I'd be challenged to say you're, you're, you're not going to have those opportunities. So yeah, it's, it's a large window and it's a window where they're having a really good time. Um, so they're happy. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's such a great opportunity to engage with people, show that appreciation for your current supporters, but also bring some new ones into the fold. Yeah. I love it. Well, here's Logan Foote's um, information, education and development for golfstatus.org. You've certainly um, educated me today, and it's been really a lot of fun. I'm really appreciative um, that you would come on and share with us all the things that we can be doing. I mean, right now, if you're watching us live, you're coming to us at a point in time where this is where those summer and fall, early fall events get planned. Um, might be really something to take a look at and get moving um, because what a, an amazing opportunity um, on so many levels. Here's Logan's information, golfstatus.org. Check them out um, because there's a lot to this. It could be a lot of fun and it can be something that can become one of those revenue generators that is just absolutely amazing. Again, I'm Julia Patrick. I've been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom. CEO of the Raven Group. If you want to share this episode or find one of the other nearly 500 episodes that we've done, you can find us on Roku, on YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, and Vimeo. Um, and then we are going to be announcing next week, but I'll kind of spill the beans. Um, <laughs> our episodes are, are also being um, formulated for podcasting. So um, when we launch that next week, we will have an astounding number um, of podcasts. So you'll be able to um, access um, the nonprofit show that way. Again, we want to thank all of our sponsors, Bloomerang, the American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, the Nonprofit Nerd Fundraising Academy, the Nonprofit Atlas, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and Staffing Boutique. Without them, we would not be here having these amazing conversations. Okay, Jarrett, Next board meeting. I say we're out on the links. What do you say, sister? Um, I'll bring my putter. <laughs> That's what they Not all say. Finger. Right. Put my putter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, this has been great. As we end every episode, we want to remind everyone and ourselves, stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow.